Hello everyone, I am Mohammed Hamama, and welcome to your ASCP preparation camp. In this camp, we will cover all the topics on the ASCP lecture list. Today, we'll dive into the fascinating world of electrophoresis and explore various techniques used to analyze and interpret protein profiles. Hit the like button and let's get start. Electrophoresis, unveiling the protein landscape in your blood. Electrophoresis is a powerful technique used in clinical labs to separate and analyze proteins in blood serum or other fluids. It works by exploiting the electrical charges of proteins. Imagine proteins as tiny magnets, some positively charged and others negatively charged. When placed in an electric field, these proteins migrate towards opposite electrodes at different speeds based on their charge and size. This separation allows scientists to assess. Protein variants, different variations of the same protein can have slightly different charges. Electrophoresis can reveal these variations, which might be linked to certain diseases. Protein concentrations, the intensity of protein bands in an electrophoresis gel often reflects the amount of that protein present. This helps identify abnormal protein levels associated with various conditions. Here's a breakdown of common electrophoretic techniques used in clinical labs. Non-denaturing electrophoresis, this workhorse technique uses materials like cellulose acetate strips or agarose gels. Proteins retain their natural structure during separation. Capillary electrophoresis, CE this faster method utilizes narrow tubes and an electric field for protein separation. Immunofixation, this technique specifically targets and confirms the presence of abnormal proteins, like monoclonal immunoglobulins, paraproteins, associated with multiple myeloma. Western blotting, primarily a research tool, it combines electrophoresis with antibody labeling to identify specific proteins within a complex mixture. Why serum over plasma? For protein electrophoresis on agarose gels, serum is generally preferred over plasma. This is because plasma contains fibrinogen, a clotting factor, that forms a band at the beta-gamma interface, potentially obscuring other protein bands. Electrophoresis results, a snapshot in time. Electrophoresis results are typically visualized as a banding pattern on a gel. Here are some key points to remember. The analysis is usually performed using buffers with a slightly basic pH and low ionic strength. The amount of sample loaded and separation times vary depending on the technique used. Different stains are used to visualize proteins in the gel, but staining intensity doesn't always directly reflect protein concentration. Densitometry, a technique that measures band intensity, provides relative proportions of different proteins rather than absolute amounts. Additional calculations using total protein concentration might be needed for more precise quantification. Deciphering Your Blood Protein Profile, A Guide to Electrophoresis Results Let's break it down. Main Purpose, Finding Monoclonal Proteins, Paraproteins The primary use of SPE in clinical settings is to detect abnormal proteins called monoclonal immunoglobulins, paraproteins. These paraproteins often show up in the beta, beta symbol or gamma, gamma, regions of the electrophoretic pattern. Quantifying these abnormal proteins helps monitor disease progression and treatment effectiveness, particularly for multiple myeloma and related disorders. Importance of Accurate Identification Not all extra bands in the electrophoresis pattern indicate paraproteins. There can be other explanations. Techniques like immunofixation electrophoresis, IFE, are crucial for confirming the presence of paraproteins and distinguishing them from these pseudoparaproteins. Factors affecting results. Sample quality, incompletely clotted blood can introduce fibrinogen, causing a band that might interfere with interpretation. Protein variations, genetic or other modifications can cause proteins like transferrin, haptoglobin, HP, and C3 to migrate differently in the gel. Inflammation, a significant increase in C-reactive protein, CRP, can create a band in the beta or gamma region. Certain diseases, monocytic leukemia, for example, may show increased lysozyme, 
resulting in a band in the post-gamma region. Hemolysis, red blood cell breakdown, hemolysis, can introduce hemoglobin into the sample, causing a band to appear. Interpreting band patterns in different regions. Alpha-1, region, changes here are often linked to alpha-1 antitrypsin, AAT. Decreased AAT suggests deficiency or protein loss. Increased AAT is associated with inflammation. Alpha-2, region, this area reflects HP and alpha-2 macroglobulin, AMG. HP migration varies depending on genetics. HP levels decrease with in vivo hemolysis and increase with inflammation. Nephrotic syndrome can cause increased AMG and high molecular weight forms of HP, along with a decrease in most other protein components. Beta region, this region shows bands for transferrin, C3, and LDL. Transferrin migration might shift due to a lack of carbohydrates. An increase between the beta and gamma bands, bridging, suggests elevated IgA, potentially seen in cirrhosis, infections, or rheumatoid arthritis. Gamma, region, increases or decreases here indicate changes in immunoglobulins. Increased gamma region can be caused by chronic infection or paraproteins. Decreased gamma region might be linked to immunodeficiency states. Multiple myeloma can suppress overall immunoglobulin production except for the abnormal clone, leading to a potential decrease in the gamma region. Remember, a decrease in the gamma region might necessitate further tests like IFE to rule out paraproteins. Immunofixation electrophoresis, IFE a closer look at abnormal proteins. Immunofixation electrophoresis, IFE, is a powerful technique used alongside serum protein electrophoresis, SPE, to diagnose and monitor conditions like multiple myeloma, which involve abnormal protein production. Here's how IFE works and why it's so helpful. Complementary to SPE While SPE provides a general picture of protein distribution, IFE offers a more targeted approach. Instead of relying on nonspecific dyes, IFE utilizes specialized antibodies, antisera, designed to detect specific proteins. Sharpening the focus Imagine lanes on a gel, each containing a specific antibody. Blood serum is run alongside these lanes. The antibodies fish out their matching proteins from the serum, forming visible bands where they bind. Unbound proteins are washed away, leaving a clearer picture of the targeted proteins. Key Advantages of IFE Higher sensitivity, IFE has a lower background signal compared to SPE, allowing for detection of even small amounts of abnormal proteins, paraproteins. Amplification, when antibodies bind to their target proteins, it creates a larger immune complex. This amplification makes the band easier to visualize. Identifying the culprit, IFE not only reveals the presence of paraproteins but also helps identify their type, e.g., IgG, IgA, IgM. Multiple myeloma and beyond, high FE can detect situations where more than one abnormal protein is present or when free light chains, fragments of immunoglobulins, are produced alongside intact immunoglobulins. Considerations for IFE Rare paraproteins while most paraproteins belong to common immunoglobulin classes, uncommon ones might require specific antisera for proper identification. Prozone effect, very high concentrations of paraproteins can interfere with the test. In such cases, diluting the sample might be necessary. Confirmation by immunoglobulin quantification, FE can be used in conjunction with immunoglobulin quantification to confirm the overproduction of a specific immunoglobulin class, which can aid in proper sample dilution for IFE. Capillary electrophoresis, CE a faster, automated approach to protein analysis. Capillary electrophoresis, CE, presents a modern alternative to traditional gel-based protein electrophoresis like serum protein electrophoresis, SPE. Here's a breakdown of how CE works and its key advantages. The setup. Imagine a tiny, thin tube, capillary, made of fused silica, with a length ranging from 20 to 200 centimeters and a diameter of just 10 to 100 micrometers. 
This capillary acts as the separation chamber where proteins are sorted. The process. A small sample of protein mixture is injected into the capillary using either electrical or pressure forces. A high voltage is applied, creating an electric field within the capillary. Proteins separate based on their size and charge. Smaller and more highly charged proteins move faster through the capillary. Challenges and advantages. One major hurdle in CE is preventing proteins from sticking to the capillary walls. Techniques have been developed to minimize this issue. CE offers several advantages over traditional methods. Automation, CE is highly automatable, reducing manual workload and improving consistency. Speed, protein separation happens rapidly in CE compared to gel-based methods. No gels or stains, CE eliminates the need for handling gels and staining procedures. Direct detection, proteins are directly detected by ultraviolet, UV, light, offering potentially better accuracy and reproducibility compared to densitometry used in gel-based methods. Quantitation, CE provides good quantitative data on protein concentrations. Limitations of CE While CE is a powerful tool, it has limitations. Immunofixation, unlike SPE, CE cannot be directly used with immunofixation, a technique crucial for identifying specific abnormal proteins, paraproteins. Alternative strategies for paraprotein detection, for paraprotein detection in CE, alternative methods like immunosubtraction with specific antibodies are employed. Western blotting, unveiling the identity of proteins. Western blotting, a powerful research technique, goes beyond simply separating proteins. It allows scientists to identify specific proteins within a complex mixture. Here's a breakdown of the key steps. Step 1, Separation. Proteins are first separated by size using gel electrophoresis, similar to techniques like serum protein electrophoresis, SPE, and capillary electrophoresis, CE. Step 2, Transfer. After separation, the proteins are carefully transferred from the gel onto a special membrane, typically made of nitrocellulose or PVDF, polyvinylidene fluoride. This blotting process allows the proteins to bind to the membrane surface. Step 3, Detection. Now comes the identification part. Scientists use specific antibodies designed to recognize a particular protein of interest. These antibodies are often tagged with an enzyme, like horseradish peroxidase, HRP, or alkaline phosphatase. The membrane is then exposed to a solution containing a signaling molecule. This molecule reacts with the enzyme on the antibody, producing a detectable signal. There are different types of signaling molecules. Photometric, these create a colored signal. Fluorescent, these emit light when exposed to specific wavelengths. Chemiluminescent, these emit light in a chemical reaction. The final picture. Based on the location and intensity of the signal on the membrane, scientists can determine the presence and amount of the protein of interest within the original sample. Western blotting is a versatile tool used in various research applications, such as identifying proteins associated with specific diseases. Studying protein expression levels in different tissues or cell types. Analyzing protein modifications. While not commonly used in clinical settings, Western blotting plays a crucial role in advancing our understanding of proteins and their functions in health and disease. Mass spectrometry, unveiling the protein fingerprint. Mass spectrometry, MS, is a powerful analytical technique that takes protein analysis to a whole new level. It goes beyond simply separating proteins like electrophoresis techniques and allows scientists to identify and even quantify them. Here's a closer look at how MS works and its advantages. Multifaceted analysis. MS instruments come in various forms and can provide both qualitative, identity, and quantitative, amount, information about proteins. Strength in numbers. Unlike techniques requiring specific antibodies, MS has the remarkable ability to analyze a multitude of proteins in a single run. 
This makes it ideal for proteomics, studying the entire set of proteins within an organism or specific compartments like blood plasma. Rapid peptide sequencing, quickly determining the amino acid sequence of protein fragments, peptides. Ionization, the key to analysis. Proteins are too large for direct MS analysis. To overcome this, they are first broken down into smaller peptides and then ionized, given an electrical charge. Electrospray, this method is particularly effective for smaller peptides. Maldi, matrix-assisted laser desorption slash ionization This technique is better suited for analyzing larger, intact proteins. Separation and Identification Once ionized, peptides and proteins are separated based on their mass-to-charge ratio using various analyzers like quadrupoles, ion traps, or time-of-flight instruments. Tandem MS takes things a step further. It involves fragmenting the ionized molecules and analyzing the resulting fragments, providing even more specific identification. Advantages of MS for Protein Analysis Antibody independent, MS doesn't require developing specific antibodies for each protein, making it more versatile. Multiplexing power, it can analyze a large number of proteins simultaneously, increasing efficiency. Unveiling hidden modifications, MS can detect post-translational modifications on proteins, which might be challenging with other techniques. Clinical applications. MS is finding its way into clinical settings for various purposes. Identifying genetic variations in proteins like prealbumin and CDT, carbohydrate deficient transferrin. Accurate determination of protein concentrations, as seen with recent standardization of hemoglobin A1C, insulin, and C peptide. Distinguishing peptides differing slightly in sequence or due to modifications. Don't keep all this valuable information to yourself, share it with your friends who might find it interesting and beneficial. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. We love hearing from our viewers and we will do our best to answer all your questions. And finally, don't forget to ask for our ASCP short notes to supplement your studying. These notes are a great resource to help you review and retain the information we cover in our videos.